Hi guys, it's Kira here once again with another video for Adobe Speedgrade for CS6. Now bear in mind that in June, Adobe is going to release Speedgrade CC, or Creative Cloud, which is going to have a completely redesigned user interface. So this video applies to anyone still using the old interface that was available in CS6. Today we're going to look at how to grade a transition between two clips, and most of the time this would be a dissolve. So we've got two clips here, a group of people looking out over a cliff, and that dissolves very slowly into a seagull on the water. Now ordinarily when you're grading, it's usually best to grade the footage before you add any transitions such as dissolves or wipes or anything like that because it's really not the ideal way to do it how we're going to describe it today. But for a lot of people, um, you might be doing a, a quick and easy type of color grade. Um, speed grade lives up to its name. It's very fast to get the job done. So let's uh, give it a go. Let's see how we can grade this dissolve. So we've got a clip here on the timeline and we're going to go to uh, file and send to Adobe Speedgrade. Now uh, we're going to find a place to save our file, our IRCP file. Let's uh, make a new folder here inside Speedgrade Tutorial and we're going to call it Dissolve. And we'll say Speedgrade Dissolve is the name of the IRCP file and we'll go Save. As expected, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro is now going to render out the DPX files, which it will then open up in Speedgrade. Now the main difference between going send to Speedgrade and rendering out the DPX files yourself is that send to Speedgrade will keep the clip separation information. So you'll see in a second when Speedgrade opens up that it will open up as three clips. It will have clip number one, Clip 2 being the transition, and clip 3 being the uh, what's left over of the second video item on our timeline. If you just went export media and rendered out the DPX files, it would more often than not just render out a uh, one block of, uh, of an image sequence, kind of like how you would expect an image sequence to act, and it wouldn't have any metadata for the clip separation. So it's usually better to go send to Adobe Speedgrade, even though from time to time, as you would have seen in previous videos, you can run into color artifacts, uh, in which case uh, follow the advice of the previous video and export the media through DPX. DPX. This is what you'll see when Premiere Pro has finished rendering out. It will open Speedgrade and we've just gone over to Premiere and we've closed it to give ourselves a bit more system resources. And you'll see here on the timeline that we have, as I said, three clips. You've got clip number one, which is the people on the cliff. If we scrub the playhead over to the second clip, you'll see the, uh, the motion through our transition there. And the third clip, as expected, is what's left over. So now we're going to work out how we can grade these two clips. And to do that, uh, we need to create a new grading layer. Don't forget, one of the common mistakes you can make is clicking on the clip and going straight into grading, which um, is one way to do it, but it's not the best way because then you're locked into that grade for the clip. You um, can't easily go back and uh, restore it to its original look. The best thing to do, and what we definitely need to do in the case of grading and dissolve, is take our grading uh, icon and drag it up on top of the clip to create a new grading layer. Release the mouse and you can see that it's made a grade specifically for that clip. What we can then do is go back to that icon, click it and drag it on top of the other clip, the clip one, and release the mouse and it creates a grading layer for that clip. So uh, we're going to deal with these two clips before we create the transition. So Let's just give a basic look for this clip here. Um, we're going to drag a color wheel and uh, warm things up a little bit because it was quite a cold day and things are looking a little blue. And we'll take this one and make it even more yellow. Uh, ordinarily, of course, you'd probably spend a little bit more time. That might be a little bit too yellow there. And also, uh, the best case would be to operate on a multiple monitor setup where you can send your video out through an HDMI output on your Mac and see it on a big screen and really see the effect of what you're doing. We can preview the change as always by pressing 0 on the numpad on the keyboard 
and as we hold it down you'll see the original clip and when we release it you'll see what we've done in the grade so that looks pretty good that's that's good for now let's head on over to our other clip of the seagull and um, maybe we can add a little bit of a mask for this one to give it a bit of a vignette so I've got a pre-designed look here and I can click on that to apply the mask and you'll see the mask in green up here and then I can go to look and in the left hand side here I can take the primary look layer and I can select uh, for applying the look to everything outside of the mask and then what I can do is go here and turn the um, the darkness down and you'll see the edge of the uh, video becoming a lot darker so you're getting a, a vignette effect this is quite an extreme vignette you'd probably want to smooth that out a little bit but often that's a nice way to create that uh, that expensive lens look that we all crave but now we want to change the colors of the clip that's not the mask so down here in the bottom left corner we're going to add a new primary look layer click that and you'll see it makes another one there and it is already set up to apply the look to the main clip so in our look we can go and maybe make this again a little bit warmer and we're going to change uh, the white balance on the clip here so dragging it around to be a bit more yellow there and I'll do the same on the first color wheel and it's uh, I wouldn't say it's the prettiest looking clip but it'll do for the demonstration and we can hold down zero on the number pad to see the original and release it again to see the edit okay but now how are we going to get that into the dissolve because as you'll see if we scrub the playhead over to uh, just before the clip grade comes into effect we've still got the nasty white balance that the original clip had and this is where we can go to the timeline tab and we're going to make a new layer here it's not going to be the video layer it's not going to be the gradient layer it's going to be a new dissolve layer what we'll do is in this dissolve here uh, we are going to be dragging that up to join these two clips together and the first part to do that is we're going to have to extend it out so it covers the area that we want so we're going to take the uh, right hand side of this grad clip and drag it over to the full length of the transition and then what we can do and I think that this is going to work uh, drag this clip up until you see the red line that goes the full width of the timeline there and we've created a second gradient layer so you can see here a spare gradient layer and it needs to also drag out to the left and it needs to be the first part of our transition so now you can see two grades overlapping and you can see in the video preview the effect that gives us it's kind of ugly we need to work out how we're going to dissolve from one to the next now in this case we're moving from the bottom layer up to the top so we're going to use a dissolve that will take us from the bottom to the top like this one now you can experiment with the different options that are available I find usually these two icons here the best way to uh, get the effect we're looking for so click on it and drag it up to in between these two clips now if I've done things correctly I should be able to release that and it'll fill that area nicely you can see it's gone to the exact width that we want it recognizes that we're working with this clip here and so now let's take the playhead to the start of the clip and as we scrub through it you can see that very discreetly as the clip dissolves the grade is also dissolving now because this is a constant dissolve it matches the um, constant mix of the original video and if you played that in real time you really wouldn't notice the change uh, because as the first video fades out so does the grade it also fades out and the new grade fades in so that's basically how it's achieved you dissolve a clip by clicking and dragging these dissolves into a new layer here there are a few ways that you can get this wrong and um, trial and error will help you out with that sometimes it's very easy to go the wrong direction where you're going from uh, top to bottom instead of bottom to top if that's what you're intending so there's a little bit of experimentation that you're going to have to do to get the desired uh, result but for the moment we've got that grade sorted let's go ahead and render that back out into premiere here in our output i'm going to assign my um, file location and then i'm going to click render so that we can send it back out to premiere pro once your render is complete head back over to premiere pro and import your render as an image sequence 
If I click import and it will show up here in the project. And now I can uh, drag that onto video 2. And of course it's the width of the timeline that we're working with. So you can see clip 1 here. Um, if I turn off the visibility of video 2 you'll see the change we made. And the same with our second clip on the timeline. The seagull on the water. If I turn off the visibility you'll see the change we made. And let's have a look at how the um, dissolve is going to operate for us. And as we can see it's pretty smooth. You wouldn't notice the change if you are watching that back. For most type of work that you're going to do, this type of effect where you're dissolving between two gradient layers in speed grade, it's going to work for what you need. But as I said, the best way to do things is to grade the clips before you import it into Premiere Pro. That way when you deal with a cross dissolve, you're actually dissolving between the two graded clips and the effect is going to be a lot better. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again when we look at the next version of Adobe Speedgrade, Adobe Speedgrade CC.